dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Lee Bowman in The Psychological Approach, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is your producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. The outstanding motion picture performer, Lee Bowman, is our Proudly We Hail star. Lee appears in our comedy as a young bank president and hospital director named Jeff Randall, who develops a heart condition over the hospital's new lady doctor. Her specialty is the mind, not the heart, which complicates Jeff's case. We'll raise the curtain on Act One right after this brief message from Wendell Niles. Men, here's adventure and excitement for you. You may now enlist directly for either of two proud U.S. Army divisions now located in Japan. The 1st Cavalry and 11th Airborne Divisions are looking for men who can measure up. If you qualify, you can be assured of direct assignment with one of these well-known outfits. Enlist now, and after a short basic training, you will be a member of one that you have chosen. Get the details now at your U.S. Army recruiting station. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Psychological Approach, starring Lee Bowman as Jeff Randall. When Jeff Randall's father died, he inherited the presidency of the Holton Bank and a place in the board of directors of the Holton Clinic. He also inherited his father's love of duck hunting. And on this particular day in Jeff's office in the bank, two of Jeff's inherited interests, the clinic and duck hunting, have met in a head-on clash, engineered by a friend of Jeff's father, Mr. Meeker. I'm sorry, Mr. Meeker, but it's impossible for me to attend this staff dinner at the clinic. I'm going duck hunting, perhaps next time. But uh, this isn't just the usual staff dinner, Jeff. We're welcoming Dr. Trundler, the new resident child psychologist. Well, tell him I said hello and sent my regrets. I've got a date with a duck. He ought to be able to understand that. I doubt it very much. Well, then he's a pretty poor sort of a man. As a matter of fact, Dr. Trundler isn't any sort of a man. He's a woman. He's a... he's a what? That's why it's so imperative that you come to the dinner, Jeff. Although Dr. Mary Trundler is one of the country's leading child psychologists, she's quite young. And as the only young, unmarried member of the clinic's board of directors, we feel that uh, it is your duty to act as her dinner partner. Uh, make her feel at home, you know. Oh, as I said before, Mr. Meeker, I'm sorry, but... You see what I see? Standing in front of the new accounts window? Where? Over on the north side, back near the vault. Now there is a luscious dish. If you ever get a doctor on your staff who looks like that, I'll not only attend all the staff dinners, I'll throw a few myself. In private, of course. Well, I'm certainly glad that you changed your mind about going duck hunting. I didn't say that. <laughs> you certainly did, my boy. At least indirectly. That is Dr. Trundler. I brought her here to open her new account. Well, Jeff, I, uh... Jeff, what are you staring at? Huh? It's me, Jeff. Mike Egan. Your old pal. Your old vice president. Your old duck hunting partner. Remember me? We're not going duck hunting, Mike. Not going duck hunting? No. I have to go to a duck dinner instead. Thank you so much for driving me home, Mr. Randall. The dinner, the company, everything was most enjoyable. Oh, you mean we were a psychological success? Oh, at least that. I can't begin to tell you how tremendously impressed I am by your clinic. Oh, I, I hope you find the people of Holton as interesting as the clinic. Well, judging from those I've seen, there can be no doubt of that. Well, certainly nice of you to say that. What's well, a fact. I've never seen so many interesting psychopathics in my life. Oh, I... Why, do you know that you have psychosis here that I wasn't able to find even in Chicago? Well, it, it must be the climate. Everything's bigger and better in California, you know. <laughs> well, perhaps you're right. How long have you been studying psychology, Mr. Randall? 
Well, I, I, I never really studied it. Why, that's amazing. But uh, I've suddenly developed a great interest in it. Oh, don't you find it fascinating? Yeah, I certainly do. In fact, uh, I was about to suggest that perhaps we could have dinner some night this week and uh, sort of compare notes while we were dancing. Oh, I'm afraid that would be impossible, Mr. Randall. My evenings are valuable study hours. I can't waste them on frivolity. Oh, well, maybe some Saturday afternoon we could go to a football game. Football game? I can think of nothing more debasing than joining a mob of vicarious athletes gathered together to oh, watch... Oh, sorry, a... sorry. How about duck hunting? Oh, really, Mr. Randall? Are football and duck hunting your favorite sports? Well, outdoor or indoor. <laughs> you know, you're rather an interesting case yourself, Mr. Randall. Oh, no, why didn't I think of that? I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, it's perfectly obvious. If you don't have time to go dancing and don't want to debase yourself by watching a football game, you can take me as a patient. Oh, impossible. I... <laughs> I don't accept adult cases, Mr. Randall. My specialty is child psychology. Oh, that's all right. I can, I can act pretty childish. That's very obvious. Oh, you needn't get out, Mr. Randall. I'm quite capable of walking to my door without any help. Oh, now, look, Doctor. Uh, Mary. It's Doctor. Good night, Mr. Randall. I'm afraid you don't know as much about psychology as I do. What could I say after that, Mike? She won't date me. She won't even accept me as a patient. A patient? Yeah, I thought I could get to see her that way, but she won't accept any adult cases. She's a, a child psychologist. Oh. Gosh, if I, if I only had a couple of kids, I could at least call at her office and talk about them. Yeah. Of course, there's always the possibility that if you did have a couple of kids, you might be married and not interested in Dr. Trundler. I could be a widower, couldn't I? Yeah, that's possible. Hey! Hey, maybe that's an idea. What? You are a widower. Huh? Sure, that's it. My kid does enough screwball things to warrant my seeing a psychologist about her. Well, how does that help me? Well, I'll tell you the things she does, then you can consult Dr. Trunro about your child. Why, oh, Mike, that's wonderful. Then do as I say. As soon as I give you a list of the kid's addicts, you trot over to Dr. Trunro's office. Oh, believe me, she'll welcome you with open notebooks. Have a cigar, Mike. I just became a father. Dr. Trunro will have to see me now. <laughs> Good afternoon, Dr. Trundler. After our discussion of last night, I hoped you understood that I have no time for idle conversation. Oh, I, I understood that all right. I, uh, I came here for a consultation. Then you have the wrong doctor, Mr. Randall. I thought I made it quite clear that I never accept adult cases. Oh, you did, you did. But uh, this isn't an adult case, Doctor. It's, uh, well, I, I wanted to talk with you about my little girl. Your little girl? Why, I didn't know that you were... Where was your wife last night? Uh, uh, have you never heard of widowers, Dr. Trundler? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Randall. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Now, tell me about the little girl. Well, I, I hardly know where to begin, Doctor. Yes? She, she has lovely eyes, like uh, yours, <clears throat> and almost the same beautiful complexion. Uh, perhaps I'd better ask some questions. Anything you say, Doctor. Would you feel more at ease if you call me Mary? I certainly would. And why don't you call me Jeff? Very well, then. Jeff. Now, how old is the little girl? Huh? Your little girl. How old is she? Oh. Oh, uh, uh, about 11 or 12, I think. You think? Don't you know how old she is? Well, I, I could figure it out. I, I have it here on paper. You see, uh, she, she, was, she was born on February 29th, mm -hmm. so I always have to stop and figure. I see. How long have you been a widower? Oh, not very long. It was really quite sudden. Oh. Has the child missed her mother very much? Well, I haven't noticed it. Poor child probably still suffering from nervous shock. What's her name, Jeff? Name? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, her name. Uh, well, uh, Mike always refers to her as the kid, but uh, her name's really Mary. Really? Yes. Isn't that a coincidence? Same as yours. <laughs> I like Mary. Who is this Mike you referred to? Oh, why, Mike's my best friend. He, uh, he's had a, a great deal to do with raising the kid. Oh. What grade is Mary in, Jeff? Oh, uh, high school. High school at 12? Oh, you must mean junior high. <laughs> yes, yes, that's it. Well, now tell me, um, what has Mary done that leads you to believe that she needs the attention of a psychologist? 
Well, she spends a lot of time talking to her horse and dog. Well, that's perfectly normal. Well, uh, maybe. Only she doesn't have a horse or dog. Oh. And the horse and dog talk back to her. I see. How long has she been doing this? Well, ever since she was old enough to talk. Hmm, it's very interesting. I think I'd better see her. You do? Yes. Yes, let me see. It's 3.30. She should be home from school by the time we get there. Let's take a run out to your place and have a talk with her, hmm? Oh, you, you, you mean now? Yes. Well, I, I'm afraid it wouldn't do much good to go now. She wouldn't be home. Oh, well, I, I can drop by this evening. Well, that'd give me more time uh, to get her prepared to meet you. Oh, don't do that. Oh, no, don't. Don't even let her guess that I'm a doctor. Why not? Well, I can probably learn much more. She thinks I'm just a friend of yours. Oh, well, that makes sense. Say, uh, why don't you come out for dinner? That would make you seem even friendlier. Yes, it might. <laughs> All right, all right, I'll come out for dinner. What time? 8.30. Well, it seems awfully late for a 12-year-old child. Oh, well, I can feed her earlier and put her to bed. What? Oh, I mean, after you get through talking to her, she can go right to bed. Then we can discuss things privately. Oh, all right, Jeff. I'll see you and Mary about 8.30. Oh, that's wonderful. Right now, I better be getting back to the bank. I have to see Mike about something. She fell for it, Mike. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> I knew she would. Women just can't resist widowers. They feel that the poor guy's been broken down already, so they won't have as much trouble training him. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming out to the house for dinner tonight. No kidding. Oh, brother, you did all right. Incidentally, what's your daughter's name? Alice, why? Well, you forgot to tell me, so when Mary, uh, Dr. Trundler, asked me her name, I said it was Mary. Oh, that's all right. She'll never see the kid anyway, so what difference does it make? Uh, plenty. You see, Mary's coming out to dinner so that she can see the girl and talk with her. I'm going to have to borrow your daughter tonight. Tonight? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring her home as soon as Mary leaves. Oh, gosh, Jeff, I'm afraid I can't let you have her tonight. Well, now, look, Mike, you got me into this. You've got to let me borrow the girl. I would if I could, Jeff, but I can't. Why not? She's home in bed with the mumps. Pause briefly from our story, The Psychological Approach, starring Lee Bowman, to bring you an important message from your government. Many high school graduates are choosing the U.S. Army as a career these days. Their reasons for enlisting are sound, too. One of the foremost is that in the Army, you can continue your education. The Armed Forces Institute has been set up to fill the serviceman's desire for further learning. Soldiers are taking a great variety of subjects at the Institute, up through college level and it costs them practically nothing. Another big reason for so many high school graduates enlisting is that they can pick the type of training they want. That's right. You high school graduates can select the technical skill you wish to learn, and you make your choice before you enlist. When accepted, training at the Army Technical School you have selected is guaranteed. Yes, high school graduates, here's further education and valuable vocational training combined in one career. Get the facts now at your local U.S. Army recruiting station. The curtain rises on Act Two of The Psychological Approach, starring Lee Bowman as Jeff Randall. When Jeff Randall arranged to have Dr. Mary Trundler come to his home for dinner and give his imaginary child a psychological examination, he expected to borrow Mike Egan's little girl and pass her off as his own. Mike's daughter, however, has the mumps. So while Mike listens, Jeff is forced to call the clinic in the hope of canceling his call from Dr. Trundler. Oh, good afternoon, Holton Clinic. Miss Galloway speaking. This is Mr. Randall, Miss Galloway. I'd like to speak to Dr. Trundler. She isn't here, Mr. Randall. She's out making home calls and won't be back this evening. Would you care to talk to one of the other doctors? No, no thanks. I'll probably see Dr. Trundler. Well, Mike, my beautiful romance has ended before it began. Mary's left the clinic, and they don't expect her to call in. Oh, that's too bad. When she gets to my house and learns that there is no little girl... Oh, boy. Jeff, we can't let her do that. Well, there's no way of stopping her. Gosh, if Alice didn't have the mumps, you could... Ah, uh, but she has. My only chance is to find another little girl. That's it. Another little girl. But whose? You can't just walk up to strangers and say, pardon me, but may I borrow your little girl? No, you can't do that. Say, what about our advertising agency? 
Huh? Well, they hire child actresses for radio programs. Maybe they can find one for you. Well, that's a wonderful idea, Mike. I'll call them right away. Of course, it's awfully short notice, Jeff. They may not be able to line one up in time. Uh, they will, or we'll have a new advertising agency tomorrow. What's that number? Uh, Central 4703. I'll have him bring the kid out to the house. I can explain the setup to her there. Now, now, in the first place, Eloise, your name isn't Eloise tonight. Well, what is it, Mr. Randall? Mary. Mary Randall. You're my daughter, and I'm your daddy. <laughs> well, that rather follows, doesn't it, Mr. Randall? Hmm? Well, I mean, if I'm your daughter, it seems quite obvious that you're my father. I see what you mean. Well, uh, now, when Dr. Trundler gets here to examine you... Examine me, Mr. Randall? From what am I supposed to be suffering? Well, uh, we're going to pretend that you are psychologically abnormal. Well, as a matter of fact, I am, Mr. Randall. I'm years ahead of my age group. I was beginning to suspect that. Would you mind explaining to me the purpose behind this deception? Well, Dr. Trundler is a child psychologist. And when I couldn't get a date with her any other way, I pretended that I had a little girl your age and asked her to come here for dinner and examine my little girl. Oh. Do you think you can remember that you're my daughter and act just a little abnormal? Well, the whole idea seems definitely juvenile to me, Mr. Randall. But I can do whatever you want. Good. Now, probably the first thing the doctor will ask you is, uh, uh, do you miss your mother? Oh, you're supposed to be a widower. Yes. The answer is that you... Say, how old are you, Eloise? Twelve. And don't forget that you're supposed to call me Mary. Oh, that's right. That's right. Mary. Mary. Dr. Trundler, this is my daughter, Mary. Uh -huh. Dr. Trundler, this is my daughter, Mary. Did you consider having Dr. Trundler examine you, Mr. Randall? She doesn't take adult cases. I should imagine that you'd make a very interesting study. So would you, Eloise. <clears throat> now, as I said, the first question will probably be... Oh, my gosh. That must be the doctor now. Now, you wait here, uh, uh, Mary. I'll go to the door. Well, what about my answers for her questions? Well, I, I want to get her interested in you so that she'll come back. You tell her anything you, anything you think will get her interested. Don't worry. You can depend on me, Daddy. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jeff. I'm afraid I'm a little early, but I'd finish my calls and I had no place else to go. Well, I, I think that's wonderful. Anything that, uh, that'll let me have a few more moments with you is... Oh, this is my daughter, Mary. Dr. Trundler, Mary. How do you do, Mary? Stop. Stop. I, I think I've seen you in my dreams. Really? Yes. I can't be sure, though. Why? Because you never had a head. Never had a head? Uh, how often do you have these dreams, Mary? Oh, every night. Oh, every night. Every night? I see all of you witches then. Ella, Mary. Oh, please, Jeff, please. I, I want her to say whatever's on her mind. Go ahead, Mary. I want to hear more. And you're riding well, up uh, room. Well, uh, couldn't we have dinner first? Well, if you prefer. Uh, yes, yeah, good. Uh, we'll let Dr. Trundler have your regular place at the head of the table tonight, Mary. You sit over there at the side. Very well, Daddy. You do have a problem with her, Jeff. I told you I did. But uh, let's talk about that after dinner. You have a wonderful cook, Jeff. I don't know when I've enjoyed a dinner as much. Well, couldn't the company have had anything to do with it? <laughs> Perhaps you have a point there. Uh oh I know you have a point. Good. Oh, you made me forget that I intended to call the clinic. It can wait till morning, can't it? Oh. I understand that there are very few emergencies in child psychology. Oh, well, this isn't my case. I, I was called in as a consultant by Dr. Hendricks. He told me he'd wait at the clinic for my report. An interesting case? Very. A little girl with a fierce psychosis which keeps her from walking. Push your phone. Out in the hall. I'll show you. Oh, that's not necessary. I can find it. Well, maybe my daughter will be through with her second dessert by the time you get back. <laughs> I hope so. I'm anxious to talk with her. Dr. Trundler calling. I'd like to speak to Dr. Hendricks. He isn't in, Dr. Trundler. He had to make an unexpected home call. Oh. He's going to call back in, though, and he's very anxious to know where he can reach you. Well, I'm at Jeff Randall's. The phone number is... I know the number. Everyone here at the clinic knows Jeff Randall's phone number. I'm glad he was able to reach you. Reach me? Was Mr. Randall trying to reach me? Yes. He seemed very anxious. <laughs> Strange. He didn't mention it. I came out here to examine his daughter. His what? His daughter. 
Mary. When did he get a daughter? Well, I... I don't know. She, she's about 12 years old. Oh, she must be his niece. Why do you say that? Because Jeff Randall's never been married. Isn't he a widower? Do you think any gal lucky enough to catch him would die? I think that's a matter of opinion. Well, that's my opinion anyway. Do you want Dr. Hendricks to call you there? No, no, no. I won't be here much longer. I'll call back from someplace else. I see you finished your dessert. Yes, Daddy. Oh, did you get your call through, Mary? Dr. Hendricks wasn't in, Mr. Randall. Well, you can reach him later. Right now, let's see what we can learn about my daughter. I've already learned all that I need to know about your daughter, Mr. Randall. Oh, now, Mary. Dr. Trundler, please. Huh? Thank you for a wonderful dinner and, and a perfectly miserable evening. Mary, wait a minute. What have I done to... Well, now, what brought that on? It seems quite obvious to me that Dr. Trundler is in love. In love with whom? Ridiculous as it may appear, with you, Daddy. The kid must be right, Jeff, or she wouldn't have run out on you that way. Well, then why won't she answer the phone, or my letters, or see me? It's been a week now, Mike. Well, no one likes to be played for a sucker, Jeff. Naturally, her pride was hurt when the switchboard operator told her you weren't married. Ah, she'll get over it. Give her time. But there isn't any time. She's resigned from the clinic. She's leaving day after tomorrow. Have you asked Dr. Hendricks to intercede for you? No. Well, it might be worth trying. She acted as consultant with him on that other case. Maybe, well, maybe if he didn't mention your name and said you were a patient of his, well, she might be willing to talk to you. I doubt it. But it's worth trying. If Doc Hendricks will do it, of course, this is all very irregular, Jeff. I know it is, Dr. Hendricks, but this is an emergency. Well, you wait right here. I'll see what I can do with Dr. Trundler. Anything you say. Who is it? Dr. Hendricks, doctor. Oh, come right in. I haven't been in to make another report on your patient, doctor, because patient? I... Patient? The little girl who's afraid to walk. Oh, well... Don't worry about her, Doctor. She's coming along very well now. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Those cases can be awfully stubborn. I'd like to discuss a much more serious case with you, Doctor. It's an adult. Oh, but... Now, now, I, I know that you don't accept adult cases as a rule, Doctor. But you've been so successful with my other patient that I would deem it a great personal favor if you'd at least investigate this case. Oh. Well, as a favor to you, Dr. Hendricks... Thank you, Doctor. I'll send the young man right in. Hello, Mary. What, what are you doing here? I, I, I came to see you. Well, you can't stay. I'm expecting a patient. I know. I'm the patient. You're the... No. Very well, I'll live up to my agreement with Dr. Hendricks. What can I do for you? Marry me. You are crazy, aren't you? Only about you. How long have you been subject to this strange fixation, Mr. Randall? Ever since the day I saw you in the bank and went... So that was you. Uh, I mean, is, is this condition chronic, or do you have periods when you feel normal? It's constant. I even dream about you. Really? What forms do these dreams take? It's always the same. It begins with my taking you in my arms. Like this. Oh? And I kiss you. Like this. Oh. Then I ask you to marry me. And then? You always say, yes. Like this? <sighs> now, now that's what I call the, the psychological approach. Curtain falls in the final act of the psychological approach. Our star, Lee Bowman, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. There's a thrill to flying, men, and a greater thrill when you're the pilot at the controls yourself. As a United States Air Force pilot, you'll have the opportunity to fly all kinds of new planes. And here's your chance for a commission in the United States Air Force Reserve. The next aviation cadet pilot training class starts in July, but there's still time to qualify. You must be unmarried, 20 to 26 and one half years old, 
and have completed two years of college or the equivalent. After successfully completing the cadet pilot training course, you'll win your silver pilot's wings, and you'll earn up to $336 a month. Men, one of the finest of careers is that of a pilot in Uncle Sam's Air Force. Get your application in right away. You can obtain yours at your local U.S. Air Force recruiting station or at your nearest Air Force base. Do it now. Back to our star, Lee Bowman, and our producer. Our play has its epilogue in the return of our star to the footlights for a curtain call so that you may meet him informally. I enjoyed this visit here with you, C.P., especially so since I have a preference for comedy. I know what you mean. You seem to be enjoying yourself, and she didn't say yes with Rosalind Russell. Well, I'll admit my, my leaning toward sophisticated comedy could easily have been influenced by Roz. She's really great to work with, and one of our greatest stars. Indeed she is. And Lee, you've made many pictures, haven't you? Well, I, I guess I've made my share. Well, uh, how have you avoided being typed? Well, for quite a while, I was always the other man, C.P., remember? You certainly were on your way then toward being typed. The monotony was finally broken when I won the girl. That took care of that. Mm-hmm. And by the way, did your law study back in Cincinnati help you with your dramatics? Well, I should say so, particularly studying Latin and French. These subjects seem to help me with the learning of words and their meaning. I think it's important to know words. How true in our business. An extensive vocabulary adds character to expression, oral or written. As summed up by Benjamin Disraeli, with words, we govern men. While we've been having our little cosery, time has slipped away. We certainly appreciate your visit, Lee. Well, it's always a pleasure, C.P. Before I leave, though, who are you having on Proudly We Hail next week? Next week, we are presenting an amusing comedy, The Genesis of Deneen, starring Audrey Totter. It's a gay story of an irresponsible young heiress whose carefree antics involved her in everything from fines and threats by the court to all-night dishwashing and charity mission. <laughs> Audrey's a good friend of mine. She'll do a good job for you. I'll be listening, C.P. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lee. Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present the gay comedy, The Genesis of Deneen, starring Audrey Totter. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Bowman appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Bill Hampton with orchestra under the direction of Eddie Scrivanek. This program is rebroadcast to the armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, Proudly We Hail next time presents Audrey Totter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.